Did you just get an immersion circulator? Looking to dive into the world of sous vide cooking? Well, today we're gonna get your feet wet, explain some things, and get you going on your first cook. Let's go. What's up everybody, James with JB Sous Vide, and I'm so glad you're back. If this is your first time here, this channel is dedicated to giving you high quality sous vide cooking that you can do in your own home. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you click that bell so you get notified every time we drop a new video. Today, we're taking a step back to basics. I've never done a true beginner series with sous vide and I'm gonna rectify that now. Over my next couple of videos, I'm gonna be taking my top five cooks that I think beginners should start with sous vide. This is really gonna jumpstart you on your sous vide journey and hopefully get you off on the right foot. Let's first take a look at our setup. If you're looking for a list of things that I use personally, they're gonna be in the description below, uh, link to it. Um, I'm not gonna go into depth on what models I use. I'm gonna save that for a different video, but this is just the basics that you're gonna need to do your first sous vide cook. First and foremost, you're gonna need an immersion circulator. Any brand is gonna do. This is gonna be your linchpin. This is what we're gonna to use to cook sous vide. The circulator's job is to heat up the water to the desired temperature, and then it wants to keep it there. Next, we're gonna need some sort of vessel to cook in. When I first started, I used a cooking pot that I had just laying around. This was perfectly fine. This is just an old stock pot I have. I was cooking for myself and I could fit most of my proteins in here. You could fit a small chuck roast in here, steaks, anything you really needed uh, within reason. After I started to get more ambitious, I moved into one of these containers that I found off Amazon. This gave me more room to cook more food at the same time. Basically, it gave me a little bit more insulation and the ability to kind of more batch cook and do larger proteins. It also gave me a lid here, which is definitely important for longer cooks. And then when I started cooking for more than just myself and I got really into sous vide, I moved on to this larger container here. This is a 16 liter container. Uh, it has a lid, has a rack here. The rack is basically used so that the protein doesn't come above the water level. And the lid also has a nice gasket and it's a dedicated um, container for my circulator. One question I get often is, do I need a vacuum sealer? The answer is no, not in the beginning. Um, as you get more into it, you may choose to get a vacuum sealer. It really just helps to have options um, when you have larger proteins or you have uh, stuff that's really weirdly shaped that is better vacuum sealed. But again, not really necessary. Uh, the gallon Ziploc bags I use uh, get me through most of the cooks. When cooking sous vide, time and temperature will be at the heart of everything you cook. You're gonna have to decide what temperature you're gonna cook at and how long you're gonna cook it for. How do you choose a time and temperature? Well, now we're getting into the variable aspect of cooking. I'd kind of counter with another question. What's your desired outcome? Let's use this question to dive into what I think would be great for a sous vide beginner, the chuck roast. Now, the reason why I'm not going with a plain ribeye is twofold. One, have you seen the price of a ribeye these days? Whew. Uh, the chuck is a more cheaper option and we can make it just as tender as a ribeye roast. Um, for comparison, the chuck roast that I got today, a four pounder, was cheaper than one pound ribeyes uh, at the store. And two, you're gonna really be able to recognize the difference with sous vide. Um, a chuck roast, a really tough cut. We're gonna make it as tender as a prime rib roast. Uh, I know you, know you might think that's a little hyperbole, but it, it truly does get it. And when you do your first slices and you take a bite for the first time, you'll see what I mean and see what sous vide is all about. Okay, enough talk. Let's go get our feet wet and get into the process. This right here is a great example of a chuck roast. This is gonna work with any one that you pick up at the store, but if you see one with marble in like this, you better jump on it. The first step in this process is we're gonna salt our meat. You wanna be as generous as we can here with the salt. We're gonna really want it to penetrate deep into this thicker cut. I'm doing this the night before I put this in the bath. We're gonna do what's called a dry brine. We're gonna let it sit uncovered on a rack in the refrigerator to let the salt have time to penetrate. You can go as little as two hours and up to overnight. 
It really just depends on how much time you have. Okay, one question you may have at this point is why are we only using salt? Why can't I use my favorite barbecue rub? Well, the answer is you can, but just remember, salt is the only thing that's gonna penetrate before the cook, right? So salt is the only thing that's gonna penetrate deep into the meat. Your favorite barbecue rub is gonna be more of a surface treatment at a time like this. Um, and then once you put it in the bath, once the juices from the meat start to release, it's just gonna wash that rub off. And you're just gonna have to uh, season it again after you take it out. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you wanna do it that way. I, it's just personal preference. I always salt before the bath, put any rubs on after. All right, it's the next day, and as you can tell, there's a beautiful deep red color on this chuck roast. Look how intense that marbon is. Today, since the chuck roast is gonna fit, we're gonna use a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. Now on to our water bath. We're gonna use the water displacement method here to seal the bag. This just means that when you put the bag into the water, all the air is displaced out and you're able to seal it up. For long cooks like this, it's definitely beneficial to use some type of lid. I've also seen people use saran wrap when they don't have a lid. This is just gonna help curb evaporation and avoid the sous vide shutting off in the middle of the night, ruining your cook. All right, now to our time and temperature question. I'm gonna ask myself, what is my desired result? The answer, I want a super tender cut of meat and I want medium rare. Now, this is where we're really lucky. Since sous vide's been around for a little bit now, there are a ton of good resources online. The big thing to remember here is it's all about finding your preferences. Using a guide to start is a great thing. It gets the ball rolling, it starts you off on the right foot, and from there you can tweak um, your times, your temperatures. You're definitely gonna find times where you use one of those guides temperatures, times, and you think to yourself, I really wanted a more tender product or I really wanted a, a better doneness. That's when you're gonna tweak it for your personal preference. For today's cook, I'm gonna be your guide and we're gonna cook with my preference for chuck roast, 132 degrees for 24 hours. 24 hours, whoa, I know, it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. When you start diving into the world of sous vide, uh, 24 hour cooks are pretty uh, regular, especially when dealing with this tough cut as a chuck roast. Um, basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna put the chuck roast into the bath, it's gonna take a couple hours to raise to the level, to the temperature of that bath, and then from there, it's just gonna continue to break down the meat until it's a tender product like you want. One thing to note here for my rare steak lovers, um, try not to go below 129 for more than two hours. Uh, it's recommended by food safety experts to stay above that temperature if you're cooking longer than two hours, just for food safety. All right, our chuck roast is done. Let's get on to finishing. As you can see here, the chuck has this line of fat running down the center. This piece over here is your money piece. I like to separate and serve from here first. So I'll take my knife here and separate. Now we're gonna prep these pieces for a sear. After you completely dry your meat with paper towels, I'm gonna to use a mustard binder. Don't worry, it won't taste like mustard at all. This is just gonna help our rub stick to our meat. For a rub, you can use whatever you'd like. Your favorite steak rub would work perfectly here. You don't even have to put a rub on it. You can skip the rub altogether and just sear those pieces up once you've dried them. For me, I'm gonna use a rub by Meat Church called Holy Cow. Just a nice peppery rub. Make sure you get all sides. All right, let's get into our second phase of a sous vide cook, the sear, uh, an equally important piece of the cook. During this process, we're not looking to cook our meat anymore. It's already at our desired level of temperature. When searing our meat, we're only looking to develop an outside crust. To do this, we're gonna use either a cast iron or carbon steel pan, just something that can hold a lot of heat. We're also gonna need a high smoke point oil. One of my favorites to use is avocado oil. If you are gonna use a cast iron, make sure you preheat that a little bit. I like to give it a couple minutes on kind of a low to medium heat, uh, just to get it warm before I really crank up that heat. 
Then once you're ready to sear, you're gonna crank it up to medium high to high heat until that oil starts really smoking. I've got an infrared gun that's gonna tell me what temperature the cast iron's at, but if your cast iron's smoking, you know that it's hitting that smoke point. If your pan is hot enough, it shouldn't take more than one minute aside. Um, when you're using peppery type rubs, you really gotta watch yourself. Uh, you don't wanna burn that pepper, um, but if your sears are taking longer than a minute, it's because your pan's not hot enough or because you haven't dried the outside of your protein well enough. Now let's watch what a typical sear looks like. Our avocado oil goes into a pan on medium high heat. Now this is the smoking that you should be seeing. In goes our chuck. I'm gonna lightly press here just to make sure I have full contact. After about a minute, we'll flip them and that's what it should look like with a proper sear. Make sure you hit those sides too. Doesn't have to be a full minute, just to get some color. Now we're moving on to the fun part. Let's slice this baby up and get a look inside. Sheesh, look at that, edge to edge perfection. We'll slice the rest up here. We're gonna plate it up with a beautiful baked potato. Add some balsamic mushrooms. A little bit of parsley for color. Mmm, let's eat. All right, y'all, let's see how we did here. <laughs> Can't get more simple and easy and delicious as a chuck roast. Um, that's one of the places where I would start. Uh, you can really turn this cut of meat into a delicious and tender steak dinner. Let's take a look here. Look at that. Looks amazing. Looks like a great ribeye. Just tender. Oh, it wants to fall apart on its own. Mm. That is like a ribeye roast. Um, prime grade. It's just amazing how tender you can get it with the sous vide. You just got to cook it a little longer. But really for, you know, quarter of the price of a ribeye right now, you can't really beat it. Um, that's the way I would go. All right, if you got something out of that video, go give it a like down below. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you go check out some of the other videos we got on the channel for you. I'll catch you on the next one.